Hello my loves and welcome back to the Hottie Life YouTube channel. My name is Jessica Alexandria and I'm so excited to be able to pull this chart for you guys today and talk to you about the full moon that's happening in the sign of Aquarius. Now not only am I going to dive into the details of this full moon and tell you exactly what it is that you can expect, but it's also very important I feel to share with you some of my more global predictions, energies and feelings that I've been picking up on lately and I sent out a few tweets and I sent out a few um, notifications I guess on thread, I don't know if that's the way to say it, kind of confessing my feelings of what I've been sensing in the environment and for the most part it sounds like a lot of you guys are picking up on the same energy and are in agreement. So. There's a lot to dive in, there's a lot to talk about, so I want to invite you to grab some tea, grab a coffee, grab a juice, a green juice, some water, a blanket, get cozy, and let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay guys, so first things first, this full moon following the sign of Aquarius is going to be pretty intense. Not only are we going to feel this in a more intimate level in our lives, but we're definitely going to see it panning out in our global interactions and what's happening in on the news. Now, I'm trying to decide if I dive into my predictions first or if I go into the breakdown of, of this full moon and then each astrological influence. I think I'm going to go with the breakdown first and then I'll end with my global predictions. But it's hard for me to even do that because Aquarius is connected to social media, social networking, the information that is being gathered and shared on a larger scale, on, a, on all across the globe that is being made known to us now presently. So at the time of the full moon, this is going to create major eruptions. Now, like I said in the very beginning of this video, I've already been sensing and picking up on some major political unrest, but I also feel environmentally, of course, I mean, you don't need to be psychic or intuitive or gifted in order to sense that, but it's almost like this building up of energy. So I really want us to put a pin in that because when we have full moons, that energy that we're already sensing has a higher chance than not to reveal itself, especially in the realms of explosions or things that come in like a lightning bolt. Don't forget that Aquarius is also ruled by Uranus and Uranus lately has been transiting through the sign of Taurus. And Uranus doesn't like predictability. It doesn't stick with patterns. It moves in erratic, unexplainable, unexpected behaviors. So basically what we do here on Earth is we give ourselves a lot of flexibility because we don't necessarily know exactly where this is going to drop. So when Uranus is transiting through the sign of Taurus, this can bring in huge changes, huge revelations when it comes to how our society has organized itself, institutions, money, banking, our, our um, environmental issues, our food, and those types of resources. All of those things are, for lack of a better word, under attack. So that's just astrological when we have the full moon this energy is heightened and gets pushed up to the surface like a huge pimple so do you remember how i've been telling you to keep your eyes on these retrogrades we have chiron retrograde neptune retrograde saturn retrograde pluto venus retrograde all of these um, planets currently retrograde are creating massive revelations massive shifts massive um uh, like upheaval and movement in our in our worlds in our intimate worlds but also collectively but more specifically uh neptune saturn and pluto those planets being retrograde are impacting the greater good in such a large way that brings revelations and things that we might i don't want to say that we weren't expecting we just are in awe that it's happening here now so this could create Actually, no, I'm going to go ahead and dive into my, my, my vision that it is that I've been having. I really, truly feel that a public figure, a major public male figure, is going to be removed from a position of power or completely stripped of power. This could, it's someone who, I don't know who this person would be. This is just my internal sense of my feeling. I think it's someone that when this person is getting stripped of their power or kind of like kicked off their throne, so to speak, the world almost rejoices. I don't know some anyone off the top of my head right now that would strike that description. 
So I am going to follow my own advice, take a step back and wait to see how this energy unfolds. But for the most part, I do see some really interesting changes and shifts in power at the time of the full moon, specifically revolving around masculine ener energy in leadership. So the other thing that it is I'm seeing too is <clears throat> some interesting dynamics and shifts when it comes to spending, businesses, employ employment, or unemployment, when it comes to how resources are being shared or divvied up. This is for me personally, because I live in the United States, I think that this energy is coming directly from the United States or around the United States. But I haven't, to be totally frank and honest with you, I haven't sat with this long enough because to be even more frank and honest with you, sitting with this energy personally lately has felt very uncomfortable and troublesome for me. The reason why I feel like it's actually giving me tension in my body and anxiety in my body is that this will create a ripple effect that will bleed out and create a wave that we're going to be feeling and experiencing for not just the year, this year, but the years to come. And on a personal level, I like to take things one day at a time. And when I'm faced with predictions or energy changes, energy shifts, in order for me to continue to do my job and stay diligent with that and consistent with that, I can't open myself up to be bombarded with too much information. So I will say that that's a prediction that is that I'm seeing. And as I'm looking at the charts now, it's, it's it's almost feels like it's being supported even further. If you guys hear any knocking or anything like that, Nova's here. Um, she's been very clingy lately. So, and also clearly here is Franklin. Franklin's here as well. So I do want to say that one way, because there's always like this panic mentality that kind of happens and I totally understand. I don't like change myself and I always have to coach myself through the art of surrender and coach myself through my altar space work. When I go to my altar, when I'm praying, when I'm meditating, I always have to remind myself of what the divine can do, what is happening within these planets, what's happening within our world. All of this is things that are predicted, necessary change, and it's for our highest and greatest good. I just knew years ago I was gonna buckle up and just go for the ride, and then I have been. So I wanna encourage you guys to do the same thing. With Pluto, Saturn, Neptune, Chiron retrograde, Venus retrograde, and the full moon, again, this is going to break down the very structure of things that weren't meant to make it to the long haul. These are things that we may say, well, this is entitled to me, this is something that I do deserve. This is something that I should have. But the truth is, is that these planets, when they're working with energy, if it's not immediately in alignment, you are not, not only not entitled to it, but you will be stripped of it or it will be stripped of you. So for many of you guys, <clears throat> at the time of the full moon, you're going to get a really in, insane sense of, I need to separate myself from this or this is not something that I'm going to interact with any longer. I'm going to branch out and do my own thing. This doesn't necessarily have to feel um, intense or like pressure or toxic or negative or hurtful or painful. It actually could be very exciting. For some of you guys, it's this return and revisit of these old beliefs, old patterns, old wishes and hopes that you've been really wanting to do that things that you've been wanting to take on but there just seems to be so many blockages that have stopped you from being able to actually take that step to fly to take that journey to go the distance whatever the case so this full moon for many is going to be an opportunity to really launch yourself and to to put yourself out there now i know that for many of you guys you're going to think well jess if there's so many planets that are retrograde is it smart for me to start something brand new or is it start is it smart for me to put myself out there or separate from this relationship or enter into a, a new enter into a new relationship and i'll say this always listen to your intuition number one if it feels right do it if you feel called to do it do it at the end of the day you are your own wisest elder and your own 
guru and the divine will speak directly to you so that's very important and impactful regardless of what anybody on the internet myself included will tell you number two retrogrades have a tendency to bring up old belief systems patterns hopes and wishes things that we might have slept on or things that we didn't necessarily have the opportunity to advance in or to do and because the end because that might be new to you in the present time it's actually a reflection of something that you've been holding on to you just had to put a pause on it or there was no action that you could have taken during that time because fill in the blank so during these retrograde times i really want you to look at that yes you might be starting a new venture but it might be re um, a new start to something that has been living within you, living dormant within you, and the retrogrades were the very thing that brought it up to the surface. Now, will that mean that there might be some pivoting and some changes and some deviations that you might need to take after the, the retrogrades, these retrograde plans begin to go direct? Yes, absolutely. But the truth is, is that as, as are most things, we always have to factor in evolution, transformation, growth, and as these, those planets have gone retrograde, they may have opened the door to something that was past, but in the present moment, when those planets then go direct, when you're in that cycle, in that stage, you'll take the experience that you've already learned, you'll take the door that you've opened, and then you'll go, you get the opportunity to kind of do something different or take what you launched and change it in some way, in a way that works better for you. So it's not all um, negative or a bad idea. In fact, it's very, it's high key, very supported. Just a second. Nova down. Down. Sorry guys, right around, um, I'm recording right as the sun's starting to go down. So the chickens start finding their spot to roost and Nova gets a little anxious because she likes to watch them, observe them and make sure, you know, when they get close to the house, she starts getting weird. But anyway, um, okay, the other thing that I want to talk to you guys about is relationships. Now, big time, there's a, a massive reflection on intimate relationships, connections, love relationships. Those things are under a lot of pressure right now. And that pressure can look like revisiting connections and ex things of the past even if you're single, past relationships and memories of past people can resurface up and you will have to reconsider or revisit the dynamic of that relation relationship, even if that person may not be presently with you now. So even though you may be single and that person might be single or that person might be in a relationship or whatever the circumstances are, Nine times out of ten, looking at these types of transits, um, there's a, well, I don't say nine times out of ten, there's a high chance that you might be re revisiting old connections, lingering karma, or lingering unresolved issues that is still hold, like the body holds on to, the mind holds on to, the heart remembers. So this full moon is another chance for you to, whether you invited it in or not, kind of revisit, go down that trip of memory lane and decide what it is that you're going to do with this. Now, remember, Aquarius is very emotional, believe it or not, but tries to disconnect from their emotions in order to do the best thing for everyone. And it's not that they don't care, it's just that that's how they operate. And this Aquarian energy, of course, will be, its influence will be felt at the time of the full moon. So when it comes to you know, um, any type of hurt feelings or things that you need to try to work towards leading, like laying it to rest, it is a good idea to think about the energy from, from a larger perspective, from how the divine, how your angels and your guides might see this as everyone is here learning. Every moment is a chance to grow and that's a really wonderful way of looking at this relationship is not seeing exclusively how it hurts you or what you would have wanted to get out of it, but also putting yourself in another person's shoes, whether this be an ex or a present, or 
maybe to even consider how you would bring this type of energy into a future relationship so that it's not so self-focused and you can work on healing this part of you that really actually is craving it. I'm looking at the chart and I can see that. This is also not just um, romantic relationships. This could show up in all different types of relationships that impact your ability to love yourself or your identity. So this could absolutely root into upbringing, childhood trauma, um, relationships with your parents, family, friends, where you bullied. How does your this these important life altering relationships, how have they shaped you and molded you into someone who can trust, who can verbally express, who feels safe, who feels supported, who feels creative, who feels fun. You know, all of these factors are added in, right, into who you are and what, how you feel now. And again, spirit is asking you, the astrological charts, um, are asking you to really, if you can, take a step outside of yourself in this moment and see something from someone else's perspective and find a way to forgive, to understand, but also vow to bring a different energy to this planet because Aquarius is also known for its consideration for humanity. Having said that, there has to be a balance between what you're doing for others that are strangers and what you do for those who are friends and family and also what is that you're doing for yourself. So if you're only focusing on yourself, your own needs, your own wants, your own wishes, if you're only thinking about how you think about things and you're not considering the perspective or the opinions of other people or how you make other people feel, then those that is going to impact your relationships. It's also going to weed away at you. Same thing happens if you're focusing on strangers and making people that you don't know happy, whether that be in your work or your clients or the internet or whatever the case is, then if you're so focused on that public appearance and that pub public presence, then that's going to ultimately etch away at your relationships or people who want to desire um who desire intimacy with you but also how you're able to feel comfortable and at ease within yourself so every one of these relationships changes let's say you are hyper focused on an um, a per like your family or your friends and you're putting them first then you suffer as well as what it is that you would be able to give to contribute to the greater good to the collective so there has to be a really nice beautiful balance and the Aquarius full moon is going to inspire what that might look like for you and also draw your attention to any type of repercussions or punishments, for a lack of a better word, if you haven't already secured that level of balance. Now, I also <clears throat> need to quickly talk about healing because Chiron retrograde right now in the sign of Aquarius, in the sign of Aries, is bringing a huge focus, especially triggered by Venus retrograde, um, a huge focus on how we prioritize ourselves or do not do not serve ourselves. We underserve ourselves. It's every everyone it's different. So Chiron is the wounded healer. It brings up our core Achilles tendon energy that's like if this spot gets hit, it just completely takes you down. So this could be how you identify yourself. I am someone who shows up to the world and I give to them. What happens if you're not giving to, to the world? Does that mean that you as a person suffers? Does that take away from you in some way? Does that trigger you? Does that set you off spiraling? So this reflects how you view yourself, how you define yourself, and begins to co create a huge question mark over it. For some of you guys, with Aries energy, this is a very fighting, very um, active or um, physical, like physically active, meaning like maybe for masculine energy or masculine energy within you. This could be um, how you define yourself as an athlete. Let's say you get hurt and you can't perform at the level that you once did. Do you still have inherent value or do you feel like you're less of a contributing member of society or that your, your worth diminished because 
you can't operate. You're you have to you. There's pain there, or there's a part of you that just can't be stretched to that max anymore. Same thing when it comes to work. Are you someone who always has to have the to be the leader, or to show up, or to you know be be a pioneer? What does this look like for you? Or maybe you're someone who has never been able to express Aries energy. Everyone is different. You're not able to express your Aries energy, so you've never been able to comfortably lean into your masculine energy. So you find that you're in relationships where te people take advantage of you, or you prioritize others over yourself, or you don't know, you don't have, the, you don't feel like you have a voice, you don't have an identity, you can't count on yourself, you kind of pass on your power to other people. Chiron retrograde at the time of this full moon is going to also influence this energy and say, listen, I'm going to bring this to your perspective so you can finally see it. Now, one last thing I hit that I want to say, I could be a little long winded with these readings, but you guys know I always like to be very, very thorough. The one last thing I want to say is the fact that one area of this chart will ultimately impact all the other areas of your chart. And for many of you guys who know my process and know how I pull astrology, it's not just one transit that it is that I'm looking at, it's the entirety of the chart and how all of these energies kind of influence each other and braid into each other, what it is that they're creating. And then I look at the transit closer and see specifically that I take a step back and I look at the bigger picture and I kind of do this dance back and forth. I do the same thing with tarot. So as I'm looking at the chart right now, I do see an interesting sense of purpose, authenticity, self-expression, and integrity that is emerging from some really tricky, troublesome, difficult places because it's how we have seen ourselves, it's how we've identified, it's how we showed up, it's what we believe about the world, what we've grounded ourselves into, what we say that this is truth, and those things are actively being derailed right now. Actively. So also, our sense of what is real or our sense of reality versus, come here, down. She's always on guard. Our sense of what is real versus what is fantasy, those are things that are really being called into question. So this shows up in our intimate lives where we say, listen, love isn't real or love is real. I believe in true love. But then we get a, a, a reality slap in the face that says, I know that you felt that love wasn't real, but then you meet this person. <laughs> oh my God, stop. Hi. All right, my loves, I'm so sorry about that. Um, my neighbor, <laughs> I'm still getting used to like being in one place at one at one time um, and not moving. And my neighbor is lo lovely, lovely. Um, but distractions and knocks on the doors and stuff like that is just <sighs> distracting. Okay, so what I was saying, I do not know. I have no idea what it was I was talking about. So I'm just gonna move on. I do wanna say too that in this um, full moon, that communication is has a, a likelihood of being strained and miscommunication, even though it's not Mercury retrograde, but um, it's still with Mercury directly opposing Saturn and with the influence of Mercury retrograde, which we're going to be feeling towards the very end of this month, later on August 23rd or 28th. I can't remember off the top of my head right now. I'll link it down below. I'll pin it in the comments. But um, I don't even know if it's necessarily miscommunication. I think that people, how this is showing up is that people are saying what it is that they mean to say but it may be a misalignment for what your what both parties kind of want it to look like so let's say this isn't relationship let's say this is business and planning this is where all people sitting at the table are presenting their opinions and presenting their perspectives but you're you hit your head like you guys hit a brick wall and no matter how much negotiating that it is that you do, it seems like nothing can really, no one's really backing down. And we can't come to 
a, an agreement on how this should pan out. So it almost feels like it's better to take a step back, to take a break, to take a pause, to focus on outside activities and outside things instead of trying to figure out how we're going to merge and meld together. And what I would do using this energy is I would see this as an opportunity not to get on the same page, but to be able to clearly see where someone, what page someone is on at this moment in time. Now, I do wanna say that Aquarius energy, Gemini and Libra, um, and also Leo, I feel like you guys are gonna be feeling this, this full moon the most. Those types of placements, you are absolutely gonna be feeling this energy the most. Um, Taurus, Scorpio, you're gonna be feeling this energy second, and the rest are going to, not only say skirt by, but fare better, unless you are in cahoots with or connection with someone who's under this influence or under those transits. Because again, like it's like if your partner is an Aquarius and they're stressed out and they're triggered or they're exhausted, they're burnt out, they're totally considering a new change in life or a new pattern, a new career path or whatever, then it can be shocking how this could impact your personal life because this might be like a zap in the income or just not a good night because that person's grumpy or the week might be a little tumultuous and that might leave you disappointed. Do you see how it kind of, kind of spills out? So just know that if you're dealing with these types of energies, this is a little extra grace, could be kind to those people at the same time. I hate to be so confrontational, but these are the same signs that are gonna be forced to change the most. And by change, I mean, there's something about their current reality that has to be transformed because it's they're learning a, a pattern that has just been so outdated and is creating a disconnect, whether it be within themselves, from a relationship, from family, from whatever the case is, it's almost like if you continue on and carry on in the way that you already have, it's gonna do more harm than good, create more problems. And at the end of the day, you know, you are a product of your choices and your decisions. So I would take a little extra time to reflect on what this full moon is bringing up for me. I would meditate on it, I would sit with it, and then I would do with this information, whatever, you know, how, how I see fit. So I was going to break down each of the zodiac signs individually, but I'm realizing that this video is gonna be pretty long and people complain if it's longer than 30 minutes, this would definitely turn into an hour video. So what I will do is invite you to subscribe to Bahati Life newsletter. What I will do then is I will send out the each individual reading and any additional predictions that as I'm seeing for each of those astrological signs, your sun and your rising sign, how this full moon will be impacting you. You can sign up at BahadiLife.com, of course. And for those of you guys that are looking for additional readings, tarot, etc., I am not open to opening my private books or my private calendar to receive more clients right now. I'm currently all booked to capacity with Jupiter in Taurus transit readings. Um, but also, uh, oh, you can sign up for Bahati Love Notes, which is my daily subscription service where just like I'm shuffling and sharing these collective messages and how they resonate with you, this is a daily service that will provide you additional oracle, additional tarot, additional intuitive channeled messages from me, from my altar almost every day. However, I did take the weekend off because I was getting ready for my horseback lesson and also um, working on orders with my family. So, um, yeah, so I am going to send you guys all of my love, all of what you could ever look for or find or need from me will be found down below. Until then, you guys, seriously, blessings over you for this full moon. If I was going to set intention for anything during this full moon, I definitely, without a doubt, would focus on my spirituality. Um, why? Because we are under really tense times energetically and the one thing that you will be able to count on and the one thing that will be constant will be your intuition and how the divine will move you 
for that reason, the higher wisdom, higher wisdom fixed candle or the Egyptian temple candle fixed candle are phenomenal. Also, the Egyptian fixed candle is amazing for serious protection and blessing and abundance in your everyday space. And having said that, I feel like I haven't burned that one in a while, so I might actually get this one lit. I know that lately, a lot of us have been working return to sender magic. I'm seeing it a lot. I'm also seeing a lot of domination um, fixed candles. I do think that those, and also um, banish a lot of, oh, and healing waters, like a lot of healing. I do think that that is great. I just think that in addition to that, I would focus on creating a spiritual sanctuary where I'm able to continue to set the intention for intuitive downloads. I don't know why I'm hearing like relief. So intuitive relief. So the divine giving, inspiring your intuition and your moves so that regardless of what's going on in the world around you, you are already seven steps ahead. And that's how I like to move to me personally. So I'll link those two candles down below. And I do have custom, um, custom, uh, contra oils and intention oils listed as well to each their own. I'm not trying to force anything. You guys do what you will. I'm just saying this is how, how I would work my magic and how I will be working my magic. So I will send you off now with all the love in the world. And for those of you guys that are not subscribed, you're not obligated to. I do want to ask that you give this video a thumbs up because it is so helpful to my YouTube channel. Of course, it also shows appreciation and gives the energy back. And at the same time, you're definitely welcome to subscribe, but if not, it was still an honor and a blessing to be able to read it for you. I'm gonna go ahead and text my neighbor back and um, tell him thank you for chasing down one of my chickens. But um, until then, you guys, I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.